welcome to the uh, engineering coffee break. Today uh, I want to discuss uh, one of my um, favorite topics, you know, making the right decision early. Now, I've been uh, coining that phrase for a long time. It made me also think, you know, what my, my dad always told me one, that uh, if you know everything up front, you could travel the world on a dime, he always said. But unfortunately, you know, we don't know everything up front. You know, that is, that is always the trick. And it's the same actually in engineering. You don't know everything up front. You don't know all the details yet. But still, you know, you like to minimize the changes that you make as changes come in from not only design changes, but you get information from vendors and you get information from the field. You get information or changes from the, from the client, from the owner operator. You know, because every change, as you know, will, uh, will cause, you know, a, a lot of hours and a lot of uh, work to be done. <clears throat> well, if it's a cost plus, maybe not a problem. If it's a lump sum, you definitely want to minimize that. So now how can we change engineering and how can we make the, um, you know, the process more productive and, uh, you know, faster? Now, you can make any feature that you can, can, can think of in, in products today. Uh, it will enhance some of the productivity, but I think a fundamental thing what really will enhance it and change it is using these rules. And using these rules to make decisions as early as you can. Because later, when you find you know, errors in the system, uh, it has a big impact on your know, backtracking and making the changes. One of the, the, the slides I've been using also uh, uh, sometimes for, uh, for a long time in my, uh, in my presentations are these, these dominoes. Because I remember when I was uh, also in engineering, if we did the PID design and we, we made some assumptions that were maybe not the right assumptions, then other people, like instrumentation, electrical, but also piping, you know, they will take that information and base their decisions and design on it. And then later you got the oops factor and you said, well, that was not exactly right. I forgot something or something needs to be changed and you need to backtrack. That means that not only you, but the other disciplines will have to change as well. So that is, you know, what I think is, is the difference between, you know, adding functions and features, which is good and will help in and, and the making the right decision early. Now, how can, how can you do that? I think, you know, we have very experienced engineers. We have standards. We have a lot of knowledge and somehow we need to capture that and apply these, these knowledge and these, these upfront to the design. Now we can do that by uh, creating these rules. That is one thing. So we can create the rules and we apply those rules to the design. Not only to p and design but also to other disciplines. But I'll just take the p and as an example as that is the document where you most start with. But also, for instance, analysis. And Alice can also help to make the right decision early. For instance, you know, we work with, uh, with partners like uh, ETAP. For instance, if you do electrical design, you want to make sure when you do your one-line diagram that you do the checking before you go to the detailed design and route cables, that the cable size is right and the, the panels are rightly sized with fuses and all that good stuff. So this analysis and rules go kind of hand in hand, making the right decision early up front, avoiding that you get the, the domino effect. Of course, there will always be changes, don't misunderstand me, but you just want to minimize the ripples. Now, there are many types of checks that you can do. You can get very sophisticated, but you can also start with very simple things, but they can help a lot. For instance, on the design part, on the drafting part, you can check the design and make sure uh, that the, the PNAD, for instance, is, is created according to the, the, uh, the rules and the standards of the owner. Like, for instance, maybe a Shell or an Exxon. They have their standards. Saudi Remco, they have their standards doing that. So you don't get any changes later on. So drafting and design standards is one thing. Of course, engineering practice is very important. You want to make sure that the, you know, the engineering practices and standards are applied, the rules, the type of configurations with, uh, for instance, check valves, uh, relief valves, instruments, certain type of instruments are done and decided up front so that you don't have any surprises later on. Standards, obviously, you know, it's great standards, especially that there are so many of them, sometimes drive me crazy, but you know, you have so many standards, but depending on the country, depending on the, on the client, you have to apply to certain standards. Company practices, I mentioned Shell and, and Saudi Aramco, I know for sure that they have a lot of these practices that they want to implement in their project. And of course, safety is definitely one. 
Now the last one, you know, is also very important. You know, we as engineers, we maybe invent all kind of, uh, you know, clever ways of solving a uh, a design problem, but that does not always mean that that particular solution is very efficient for operation. Operation may have other views, even if the implementation on the engineering side may be a little bit more expensive, if they maintain it for 40 years and that way is cheaper, of course the cost benefit is there. So many owners uh, have also some rules of you know, how they want to do the design to facilitate a lower OPEX or a lower cost in the operation. So these things, that's pretty clever, what we can do is we can capture these knowledges that are in books, on pictures, in somebody's head, you know, in, in experienced engineers, and capture that and put them in these rules and these analysis products and upfront check the design. Now, of course, when you are 0% and you have to go to the 100% uh, project, in the beginning, not everything obviously is known or done. So if you execute all the rules in the beginning, you get a lot of errors, obviously. So you can actually do a, an initial set of rules that, that check for the initial phase, like the 30% complete, and you can add rules, libraries of the rules, as farther as you go down the line. But the whole concept is that you are using these rules to check design, to comply with these standards, and avoid that the other people will have to redo the work, or even worse, you buy something and install something in the field, and you have to redo that. That obviously all we know is the most costly and damaging um, thing that you can do. Now you probably would say that there are uh, different types of project. Power is different than a chemical plant. Uh, different processes, if you do gas, LNG, or if you do uh, just uh, chemical processes, it obviously it's different, different industries. You know, you have different rule sets. So we need to create the different rule sets for the different clients and with the different standards. And if you can capture that somehow in, in, in a file or in a, you know, I'm, I'm not an IT person, but we can capture that and then apply it depending on actually uh, what type of products you're using. So anyway, I think that when we, uh, when we look at uh, executing these projects, these large projects, these projects are work shared, meaning, you know, everybody does a piece of it. How do we get consistency in it? How do we apply to the owner's rules and standards? How do we make sure it's safe? How do we make sure that we avoid some of these ripple effects? I think is making the right decision early and applying you know, these rules to the design early on. And the different rule sets, like I said in the beginning, and when you go down to the, to the, the, whole, uh, the whole life cycle of the plant. So that's what I wanted to share with you uh, during this, uh, this coffee break. I hope you get to uh, some ideas what is possible these days with the technology. Yes, it will uh, be a change to the work process, you know, but hey, if we don't change, then we definitely don't get any better. So sometimes we have to uh, just uh, try something out and try something different to, uh, to improve our work processes and our deliverables. And with that, you know, bottom line, improve our business. With that, you know, I'd like to thank you for your attention and maybe we'll see you next time in another break. Thanks.